everyone. Welcome to the Zero Fossil Fuel Show. Uh, I'm on my way right now to work in the Honda. And I have a vacuum gauge connected on my dashboard, which I'm going to show you right here. And I don't know how well you're going to be able to read that gauge, but I'm going to tell you the, um, the value just between the red and the green zones is 18 inches of mercury, okay? And that uh, that calibration point you see in the middle of the in the middle of the green zone is 20 inches of mercury, and then each major division is five inches. So the major division that you see in the red is 10 inches of mercury, and then uh, five inches of mercury. Let's see, is that right? No, I'm sorry. The major division that you see in the small red zone is 15 inches of mercury. The first major division you see at the lower red zone is 10 inches of mercury, and then five in the middle of that. And I just want to give you some idea of how wildly the vacuum changes in an automobile as you're accelerating through the gears or as you accelerate from a stop. Now, that is 10 inches of mercury right there, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm in fourth gear, that is very light acceleration. But that is the place where we want the HHO being generated to supplement our gas while we're accelerating. Now I'm decelerating. I have my foot off the gas. That's about 23 inches of mercury right there. Okay, if we were to have a, a cell attached to that, and I have to hold my cell phone camera down a little bit because I'm breaking a whole lot of laws by recording this, and as a policeman, by the side of the road. I don't want him pulling me over. Um, but I'll continue the explanation. Um, the, the, as you're decelerating, the vacuum is the highest. If we were to have our HHO electrolyzer cell attached to the intake manifold and under this condition, we would be generating the most amount of HHO during deceleration. And that is exactly the opposite behavior that we would like to have from the cell. The only way to get there is instead of using the manifold vacuum directly, is going to be to pump it out. You need to be at about 15 to 18 inches of mercury to be at one half of an atmosphere, which would probably, which I'm assuming, or I will measure for you shortly, uh, would double the gas production from the cell. Okay, now there it is, 18 inches of mercury, and that's just at an idle. I'm sitting at a stop, so now I'm going to start up just a little bit. Okay, slow acceleration, first gear. So you're seeing the, the vacuum is fluctuating really, really wildly. Of course, if I mash it, tires spin because <laughs> the roads are wet. And there I am at an idle again. All right, I'm cruising along the highway right now. And uh, just coming up on an entrance ramp. I'm in fifth gear, and that's seven inches of mercury. So, and I'm, again, this is very light acceleration. Now I'm just sort of cruising along with the, with the engine idling. According to the vacuum gauge, this is still an acceleration, so this must be a slight uphill incline. But later I'm going to demonstrate for you how much of an impact these wild fluctuations of vacuum have on the way the cell behaves. Okay? Because we have trapped airspace inside the cell and inside the bubbler, as vacuum decreases in the intake manifold, if we have it connected without a check valve or without a one-way valve, all right, what will happen is the vacuum, the residual vacuum in the cell and in the bubbler is actually going to pull gas backward. Instead of forward into the intake manifold, it will pull it backward back into the cell until the cell can generate enough gas to overcome that, that, uh, that pressure. And then when I release my foot from the gas uh, and, the, and the vacuum increases sharply, it sucks all of the HHO out of the cell in a burst, which again is exactly
exactly the opposite of the way we want the cell to behave. If you're just cruising along and you have your foot at one spot on the gas and the, and the vacuum doesn't fluctuate and you can keep it that way for a long time, just by simply connecting the cell to the intake manifold would probably work. Okay? But in real life, that's not what you see on the road. And that's what I, that's what I really wanted to demonstrate here for you just uh, today, is that as you're driving along, there are major fluctuations in the intake manifold vacuum. And attaching a cell directly to it, while it will increase the output of the cell, is not increasing it in the way that you want it to go. But the amount of energy required to pump it out, to create the vacuum, is extremely small. So it doesn't matter if we have a vacuum pump attached to the output of the cell driven by a power from the motor. It places such a small load on the motor that the benefits we receive from doing that greatly outweigh the amount of energy that we have to put into the cell, or into the pump, to, to suck, or to put a vacuum onto the cell. Okay, here we go, finally. My usual stop and go funeral procession on the highway. Anyway, uh, that's all for now. And uh, the next video is going to be with the vacuum pump on the cell. I'll show you how I'm going to take those measurements. I would like to mention right here that Tom, who uh, is the owner of PWMPower.com, who manufactures pulse width modulation uh, voltage controls for cells like this. For the month of January, he and I, uh, he has agreed to donate 50% of his net profits of all sales during the month of January for his pulse width modulation circuits to the Zero Fossil Fuel uh, donation fund to help further the research. I'm going to tell you right now, plans are coming out very soon, and pulse width modulation control circuits that are attached to the throttle, throttle mechanism of your automobile are going to be absolutely essential. So I would get your orders in now. He's going to be overwhelmed with orders. I, when I release these plans, folks, he is going to be just buried. So get your orders in early. Uh, by so doing, you're helping yourself, you're helping Zero Fossil Fuel, you are helping humanity. Zero Fossil Fuel signing off for now. Boy, have I got some things to show you.